Hey guys, Shane here. So it's been almost a year ago since I made this press and I figured I would do an update on it um, and answer some questions. There's been a lot of questions on it. So I've used it quite a bit through the year and so far it's worked great. Um, it hasn't blown apart, the welds are still holding and it still does a great, still does a great job. So. Uh, a couple things that I would change. Let me zoom in here. So one of the things I would change is the uh, holders for the die blocks. Um, make it so it will accept a square plate. The way I've got it now, I'm about an eighth inch longer. So it won't quite fit. And I can trim this off and make it work still. The is easier to make it so it takes a square plate when you're building it. Also make sure you make the bottom and the top the same size. That way you can interchange them. Um, like on my hammer eye die, be nice to be able to put it in this way or this way. You can either use this on the bottom or the top. Yeah, well, that's what I changed. That's that's really about the main thing. I get asked a lot about the noise. If there's a way to isolate the noise, and really the only way to do it correctly is to get some longer hoses. I would move this press over on that wall, run the hoses through the wall and into the other room. And that's about the only way that you could really quiet it up a bunch. Um, I've been asked a lot about if you can put an isolation box around it. Let me move you to the back side here. Now the problem with building an isolation box around this is you would have to have a pretty good size and you'd have to be able to keep air flowing through it because this motor is cooled by a fan that's built inside so it needs to keep that airflow going across it. The hydraulic pump I don't think is as critical as the motor but you definitely need plenty of airflow across that motor. Um, one of the main things well, let me start over. This is a press I got from Tractor Supply. And it's kind of their midline. But for this, they use some pretty cheap parts. And let me zoom in on this Lovejoy connector. So you can see on this Lovejoy, there is no spider in it. It is metal on metal. And that's why this thing is so damn noisy. If you upgraded this Lovejoy connector, and I, God, there's a site online, and I have to look it up. I can post it in the video here. I think it's hydraulicparts.com. You can buy all sorts of different sizes of connectors, and then this housing that holds everything together. Because you would have to change that because the connector is bigger, and they wouldn't fit through the hole here. I don't think. I don't know, you might be able to grind that hole bigger and still use this, I'm not sure. But Anyway, upgrading that connector would be a big improvement and I think that would cut down a whole bunch on the noise. And if I did that, I might be able to go back to that uh, bigger and faster motor that I originally had on here. Um, I took it off just because it was so damn noisy. And in doing so, I lost about half the speed of my RAM. So yeah, to isolate the noise, upgrade the connector, or move this into the other room. One thing that I thought what I would use more is the foot control on this. So I'll tell you, I do 90% of the work with the handle. Um, if you're using a flatter or something, Then it's nice to be able to hold the metal in, the, in your tongs and use the flatter with your other hand. So 
That's about the only time that I use the foot controls. And I like the, the stand that I built for it, especially the uh, little rack along the front. That way I can hold all my tools, some spare hammers. And that was something that was real easy to build. I also added a couple boards to the top here because as you're using it, stuff slowly vibrates off. One improvement that we could make to the press. Let me move you back to the back side again. So these presses are not designed to be used as a hydraulic press for forging. They're just they're not heavy duty enough. I have just a little teeny bit of flex. Uh, maybe throughout the whole thing I get maybe a quarter inch movement up here at the top where the ram is hooked into it. And one way to eliminate that would be to take another piece of either flat iron. Let me see if I got something. Just a good thick piece of flat iron and weld it right up the spine of this back. Or just get another piece of I-beam and weld it from here up. Directly, directly to this, all the way along it. That would help stiffen it up a bunch. I mean, it's not bad. It's not enough that it makes the dies, you know, skawampus when it's pressing it. But there's just a little teeny bit of flex. And I think if you use it every day, over and over and over and over for years, that flexing is going to make something, something bust loose. So um, it would be a good idea to stiffen that up. So another thing to keep in mind up top there where that eye bolt is that holds the ram to the frame. That distance that that, that is off of the frame. You want to make sure that your die, your working area of your die is directly in line with that. That's kind of why I got these dies offset back. So I'm working right in this area. If you're out here is your main work area that's going to want to push out when you squeeze down so the if you buy a press the further out that is the better it's going to be so you can get your work area further away from the frame and so far with this i haven't had any problems i've made hammers and tongs and whatnot off of it and it's worked fine for it, so keep that in mind when you're building one of these. Another thing to keep in mind on these, he's got a really long ram. Where's my tape measure? 30 inches. So then this, this ram can extend all the way down to the base here. But you don't want to be working in that area. You don't want your ram fully extended. It gives it more chance for it to flex right here. You want your at least a third out, so two thirds still inside your ram. I mean, I still got plenty of height. I can raise this all the way up to here. And I can still work a, a 12 inch piece in there. To so make your bottom die block up high like I've done on mine. You don't want to overextend that ram and you want to keep as much inside and that will just keep everything nice and rigid. Hopefully I explained that good enough. If you guys got questions, leave them in the comments. I try to answer, answer every one of them. So Another thing I had to do, and I think I mentioned this in the build video, is up here where the pin goes through, it goes through the ram then through the frame, back out through the ram, and out. You can see along this side, I don't know if you can see it in the video, there's a gap there. There was a lot of slop side to side. So I found a, a big washer that actually fit in there, fit in perfect,
took all the play out of it. Also where the pin goes through the frame here was really sloppy. It was good and tight on the ram, the brackets on the ram, but the frame itself, the hole was a little too large. So I had to take some shim stock, I've got some titanium shim stock, and I filled up that hole, took the play out of it. That way this is nice and tight now, before you could sit there and wiggle that and kind of turn it a little bit. So that took care of that problem. So yeah, like I said, it's been a year now and really happy with it. I think I paid, God, I can't remember. That was a year ago. I'm lucky if I can remember what I did last week. I think I paid, I know it was under 800 bucks for the whole thing. So for the cost, you can't go wrong. I bought it while it was on sale. Plus my wife worked for Tractor Supply and got a discount. And yeah, for the money I paid, this does a great job. Um, keep in mind, I did have the motor, so you'll have to make sure you got you know money for a motor. And I hit the scrapyard and bought the steel. These are uh, forklift tines that I made the die blocks out of. The bottom block or anvil or whatever you want to call it. These are solid steel pipe. Um, they actually come off of an old line shaft that I had. So I just had to buy just a couple things. I think this one inch thick plate that I've got, I bought. And then the forklift tines. And some scrap steel for the, the, uh, the stand. So if you guys are going to go this route, hey man, go for it. I don't have any, any reservations with it. I know a lot of guys badmouth hydraulic log splitter presses, but hey, this has worked great for me, so. Alright guys, I think I answered most of the questions that were on the original video, the build video. Um, if you got any more, like I said, leave them in the comments below. And we'll go ahead and end this video. Maybe in a year from now, we'll do another update. Alright guys, thanks for watching.